My name is Brandon Elliott. Uh, I serve as the chief technologist for Rackspace Digital. We'll talk a little bit more about Rackspace Digital in a minute and kind of where it sits within the greater Rackspace area. Uh, very briefly, my practice area is responsible for the strategic and technical investments uh, for applications like Sitecore. So really, we've succeeded when we've been able to hide all of the infrastructure and cloud and load balancers, et cetera, and all you see is Sitecore. Is that better? All you see is, uh, is Sitecore. You don't have to worry about the complexity behind it. So that's what we, we try, uh, strive to do, is, uh, is make it completely invisible. So one quick note. Uh, I felt a little guilty bringing this MacBook to the conference and felt guilty error using Keynote to present. Um, for the record, I also have uh, a Surface Pro 3. I just happened to use this because I'm gonna, I'm gonna take an excuse here. The production team uh, created it all in Keynote, so I'm an equal opportunity. Uh, very briefly, a little bit about Rackspace. So we're heading towards about $2 billion in sales. Uh, we've got 10 data centers and we've been around for 15 plus years. Um, and those data centers are uh, around the globe. So when we look at Sitecore um, and where it should be run, it depends on the customer's requirements, right? It, you know, it, is it government grade? Are there any security provisions that we need to consider? And so the team will engage and ultimately come back to you with a solution, or maybe you have a preference in a private cloud, which would be VMware, OpenStack, and, uh, or Hyper-V. Um, those each have teams that service them within Rackspace. And within public cloud, uh, we absolutely support Azure now. We're, we're a certified partner and we, um, we treat it just like we treat our own. So if Azure, for example, is a better fit than Rackspace public cloud, uh, that would be a good choice as well. There's one more logo that's not here. Uh, stay tuned next week, maybe you'll hear something about that. So Rackspace has actually been in the commerce content business for a long time, as you might imagine. Um, one, organically, just people bringing servers over the years, uh, or needing servers from us, I should say, and then that transition to cloud years ago. But Rackspace Digital actually focuses specifically uh, on commerce and content. And so for commerce, we have deep expertise from sales all the way through support for Magento, Oracle, and Hybris. And for content, obviously, Sitecore and that one. So the ideal is very simple. Um, let us handle the scaling for you, right? If we're not efficient, ultimately that's on us. If you need, for example, extra servers for a big marketing event, um, the way we work that out is put you in contact with the critical application team, drop a ticket, pick up the phone, and we can handle adding additional infrastructure for those types of events. And of course, we understand that reliability is key. Uh, the website has to be up, and up doesn't mean eight, nine second page responses, right? So when we're looking at um, applications like Sitecore, we're looking at it from bottom up, uh, CPU disk, IO, et cetera, but we're really looking at it uh, like your customers are looking at it, right? Using application performance monitors that are looking at Sitecore itself. And so you could go build all of this yourself. Uh, one, one comparison is this is basically a public cloud provider, right? You can create your own VPCs and you can create your own redundancy and you can create your own database backup schemes and all that. You have to ask yourself, is it adding intrinsic business value at that point for you to do it or is that something uh, that somebody else does? And so the way we look at it is we're gonna build that car for you, we're gonna assemble it, we're also gonna maintain it and let you focus on Sitecore and your customers. So I'm gonna show you a little preview today uh, of kind of the direction we're headed We've long done custom hosting, um, but we see a lot of demand for customers who want to go far beyond just help me scale and help it make it redundant, and the, you know, kind of the basics now. We see customers who really are asking us, how do I get code, for example, from dev to production quicker? I have this major marketing event, and you talk to CMOs, and they're, they're often frustrated because of how long it takes to get something that they look at over here in QA. It could be a week or two later until it ends up in production, depending on exactly what it is. And so when we look at all of our tickets over the years, um, and when you look at this, this quote from Gardner, you can look at most of the issues actually stem from people and process problems. They absolutely do. It's, for example, um, not the deployment mechanism of moving code as an example, it's usually the code itself, and somebody messed up on that. Um, also, uh, incorrectly sizing and other human errors really account for a majority of it. And so we sought out to really kind of go above and beyond and start addressing some of those uh, particular challenges. 
So the major things that we're considering, uh, as you are, uh, is how long the site takes to load, right? A couple of seconds may be acceptable, three seconds may be a yellow, and anything over that or down is red. And so this solution absolutely uh, looks at it from the lens of, of your customer. And the ideal is to really make it as simple as possible. The core three tenets, uh, it should not be frustrating. The system should effectively drive itself. Um, it should require minimal input, and it should be completely automated. And so this all wraps in because we're able to do this on some of our other platforms because of Docker. Uh, the way that ties in, the way it's enabling us to guarantee exactly what you tested in QA is what you end up with in production, and also speeds things up. We'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. So with this offering, we'll have um, the managed cloud architects for Sitecore, as well as the engineers, 24-7, 365. Uh, we'll do things like auto scale. So I'll show you a little bit about this, and then we'll wrap it back to kind of, this is the journey we're on right now to, to help everybody here uh, automate some of these deployments. And we'll wrap it back to Docker. So one potential onboarding path, and I realize it's not always this easy, but customers really want to come to your site, say, hey, I've got two Sitecore licenses, I've got three, I need dev, and be able to deploy it. Obviously, there's a lot of things behind the scene going on here. Um, but effectively, you can take it all the way from source code to production, or source code to development rather than through production. Let's say in this particular example, this is the interface uh, that we're building right now, which you'll see in uh, hopefully early 2016 on Rackspace.com. Uh, it's a very Sitecore-specific lens. We'll be adding a lot of Sitecore-specific things. And let's say that this user, for whatever reason, didn't want a QA and staging environment. So we're going to uncheck that. We're going to continue our deploy sequence here. And we're going to spin up the clusters. This is, uh, and we'd love feedback on this. This is one of the number one reasons that I'm here is to understand uh, if this makes sense and to add the additional features that Sitecore customers want. This is an example of the interface showing the different environment labels, so development, production, et cetera, uh, coupled with the snapshot for the front end delivery and the back end authoring cluster performance and health. Uh, CPU, disk, IO, and then as, as we talked about, if you actually scroll down here, we would be including things like application performance monitoring so that you can um, identify, for example, code problems where from release 1.1 to 1.3, we see a line and your performance dropped 15%. Proactively address that, open a ticket. So this is the development environment that we have. Uh, it's all tied into DNS, automat automated DNS, sorry. And so, we're gonna take this development environment and clone it over to QA, right? Something that usually takes a ticket, at least takes your uh, developers out of their job and what they do best, and that's uh, you know, addressing performance, that's um, creating new features. Um, they often become sysops, devops uh, individuals, and we'd like to be able to separate that out where you can rely, for example, on a team who does sysops and devops, let the developers continue to develop. So we're spin up the QA environment. Last little bit. This is uh, packages, so, right? So this is where you might see like the Hedgehog TDS packages as an example. Um, what you're seeing here are the packages that are installed in the QA environment that's selected. What you can see is the system is aware that there are packages that the development manager in this case has authorized for release. Um, and the person that's looking at this view right now has the permission to deploy those into QA, but not to production. And so you can see that it's basically a one-click install. And there's a lot of behind the scenes where we go grab the package, we deploy it, we call the APIs, do all the database schemas, et cetera. And so a lot of this um, absolutely would not be possible, especially with our other product lines for the A word and for Magento as an example, uh, without, without the Docker containers to drive a lot of this. It's enabled us to separate sysops and devops individuals who are very good at automation and know cloud very well, but don't know apps like Sitecore very well. Uh, and they can now focus on, on the infrastructure and uh, let the developers focus on what's in the container. So where does this all fit in? Docker being the well, of course. 
Microsoft is working on several uh, technologies, uh, different approaches to allowing Docker to automate and orchestrate these environments. And Derek's gonna go into more detail, so I'll hit him at a very high level here. Basically, the Windows Server kernel uh, underneath it, and then you've got a tr more traditional Docker container. Uh, who, who here is uh, familiar with Docker in general? A couple, about half, great. So this is very similar to the way Linux uh, has, has handled, Docker has uh, separated out for Linux, where you've got your relatively trusted environment in a pure container. That's the top one you see here, which allows orchestration, automation, scalability. You can do things like resize the core count um, and separate processes, so they're very lean. One example is, uh, for, for the Magento product as an example, we're putting Apache in one container and then the, separate, the other one is PHP FBM, so that when you do an update, the code differential may be like 20 kilobytes instead of downloading the whole mess again. And Apache actually doesn't update because in a lot of cases, it's just the front-end web server. And so we're really breaking those down into individual containers. Hyper-V is very similar. Uh, it allows the automation, orchestration, scaling, uh, as you would expect from Docker. Something Microsoft's doing that's very cool here is they're also wrapping Hyper-V around it. So in the second model, you get all the benefits of the first one, but you've got that blanket of security. So you're not sharing the Windows kernel at this point. Um, you're really completely isolated like you, like you would be with Hyper-V. The difference here is that you don't have to go write all the APIs and automations in Hyper-V. You can stick to using Docker via all the wonderful tools out there for automation and orchestration. And Docker can actually deploy these, keep it safe in a multi-tenant environment. Or if it's, for example, your own containers in your own environment, you can take advantage of the lightweight uh, container style on the problem, the Windows Server container. So what would this look like? You've got your source code uh, control system, let's call it Git in this case. You got the CI-CD build process. So one thing that we're doing is we agree up front that when somebody checks in something to the source, source code control system and gives it a version number, so let's say it's QA underscore one, two, three, um, we're monitoring that and we automatically do a build. We go through regression, we, any test that uh, the developers have included in the code base. Uh, we're looking at doing Selenium type things for the front end, but that's a little down the road. And then ultimately what we're doing is creating a Docker container of that instance. And so it's an absolute snapshot of what the developer sees locally. Um, and then the, basically the GUI that you saw before is the container management front end. And so what it's actually doing when you're doing things like, hey, clone QA uh, to prod or, or dev to QA, it's actually taking that Docker container out of the repo and positioning it in a blue-green manner so there's no downtime. And so if you look inside, what's, what's really happening is you've got something monitoring the source code control system that's building the Docker images. We run these tests and it ultimately ends up in the, in the respective cloud. And that could be private cloud. So I told you I would say very high level on that, probably too high level, but uh, Derek's gonna jump in, some more detail. All right, so most of you guys are sitting over here, so I'm just gonna move my uh, prop table over there so you guys can see. So, so my name is Derek Hunziker. I am a uh, developer with Hedgehog Development. Uh, so for the second part of this uh, discussion, I'm gonna be continuing the talk on containers uh, and focusing more on what containers will mean to developers, uh, how, how they might impact the way that we develop for Sitecore, how they might impact the way that we deploy Sitecore. Um, so to begin with, I'm gonna talk about deployments. And uh, to help guide the discussion about deployments, I'm gonna use an example scenario. So uh, I just want you to kind of imagine that you work for a company that has a, a really, really important website, one that basically has zero tolerance for downtime, uh, and you've been tasked with deploying Sitecore to the content delivery uh, environment. So uh, you're, you've been put in charge of that. You're, you're solely responsible for that. Um, so here's our website that we have to deploy to production, okay? Uh, so let's just talk through the steps that what you would do to deploy Sitecore to this environment, okay? So I have here uh, a server. It's actually my laptop, but just picture this. Imagine that this is a server here. We're going to over-provision this server 
because you know we can't have our website going down, so we're just going to play it safe when we first launch. So we're going to go, we're going to overspec this, and then we need to install an operating system. So I have here Windows Server, okay? So install that on the server. Uh, then we're going to need to configure it, right? Because we need to ins we need to install IIS. We need to uh, maybe enable some frameworks. So I have here these little cogs that represent configuration. So I'm going to configure the operating system a little bit. Uh, the next step is that I need to install Sitecore itself on the server. So I have this little ball that represents Sitecore. That's going to be installed. Uh, there's actually some more to do there. We actually have to configure Sitecore now, right? Uh, we have to apply, apply our configuration patches, things like that, uh, make sure that we have uh, the security hardening in place, a lot of little manual tweaks to it, right? Um, and then lastly, we have to deploy our code. So I have here some Mardi Gras beads to represent our code. So we deploy that on top of it and hope that it works. And uh, so let's say the website was a success. It launched successfully, and we now need to do another deployment. So we have some more code that we deploy on top of that, OK? So uh, I guess the question, question for the audience is, what are, what are some things that could potentially go wrong with uh, this deployment here? Is there anything that perhaps could be improved or things that that just could be better in general. So I have a, I have a hint here, just in case. So, Ben? That's, that's very true, yes. Yes, anyone else? Missing files, okay. Uh, I have a little, some hedgehogs here to throw out to anybody that participates, by the way, so. <laughs> yeah, if you work for a hedgehog, you don't get one. Uh, so yeah, so um, that's absolutely right. So we, first of all, we can have differences in our operating system frameworks that are installed on the server. Uh, we can have a difference in configuration. This is a, a production instance, so of course it has to have a different configuration than your, than your QA environment, your, your dev environment, et cetera. Um, so as Ben mentioned, we, we have remnant files that may be left on the server, so we deployed new code on top of the existing code, but we didn't remove old files. So there may be some remnant files living up there that can cause problems, okay? Uh, and then it's slow, we may miss a deadline. That whole process can take time, um, and it's just prone to error. Uh, we're, we are all human, so we make mistakes, so. Um, let's take a look at the process, uh, again, except using the containers. So I'll remove this here. So instead of installing Sitecore directly onto the operating system, we're going to install it into, or we're going to run the app in a container, okay? And so within this container, the app is completely isolated, but it can still use some of the resources from the operating system itself, okay? So it still has access to the things that it needs to run, but it's completely isolated within this box. Uh, so the benefit of that, as Brandon mentioned, is that you can actually uh, you can run this container in, in any environment and basically it'll run the same exact way. So when you're developing it locally, when you're pushing it to your QA environment, it's gonna be the same exact package. And then secondly, you can run multiple containers on the same operating system. Um, this, this piece of software here, the, the, the operating system is actually a, a server class operating system. It's designed to multitask. And before we were just running one app on it whereas it's actually designed to run multiple apps. So you can run multiple containers. Uh, so let's take a look at what's actually in the containers, okay? So in this container here, I have MongoDB. So this little green ball here represents MongoDB. This one, I have Solar, so I can run Solar in a container. Um, and then lastly, I have my Sitecore container here. It's not technically possible yet, but this is all really new stuff, and I think it will be possible very shortly. Um, and then also, along with my container, I have a set of instructions. And these instructions are basically a way to tell 
Docker how to reconstruct this image from scratch, okay? So these instructions basically run through exactly what needs to happen in order to build that container. And let's look at an example, uh, example of what this Docker file might look like. So we have, the first step is to start with the base operating system. Uh, and then we need to basically configure it, uh, configure the server, install the frameworks that we need. Then install Sitecore, uh, Sitecore 8 of course, and uh, any modules that we may need for Sitecore. Uh, then copy our, our code, copy our, our site assembly, or the assemblies and any assets for our site on top of that. Uh, apply our configuration transforms, anything that we need to do to uh, get the configuration in place. And then finally, uh, configure an app pool and start the app, okay? So I have a demo of uh, Windows containers, which is really new. I think the technical preview came out not just a month ago. So it's really new, and please don't use this in production. All right. There we go. So this is what you'll see when you log into Windows Server 2016 is basically just a console window. Window, excuse me. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is actually run a, a series of commands here. The first one is uh, Docker. And I'm just going to say help. See what commands we have. And then to see what uh, containers we have running on the system, I'm going to say Docker. Docker. PS A. So we have we have no containers running on this server at the moment. Uh, so what I can do is actually start a container here. Uh, this command is basically going to say Docker run, uh, and uh, we specify a name for the container. I'm going to bind some ports and choose a base image for it. Um, and at this point, that container should be running now. So if I run this command again, I should see that I, I now have a container running on the server. Uh, if I hop over to a web browser, I should be able to actually pull up the container in a web browser. Yep, so that's IIS running from a container within Windows Server 2016. Um, some other things we can do there is we can actually go in to the container itself. If we can figure out how to work the Mac. There we are. So what I can do here is actually go into the container uh, using this command. And so I'm going from the host machine, and now I'm actually within the container itself. So within here, uh, I basically have an isolated scope. I can do anything I want. I have my own file system. I can, I can control IIS. So I'm, I'm actually within, inside of that container. So I think that's pretty cool that you're, you're able to just treat it as if it's its own operating system. Um, so that's pretty much the, the demo uh, for now. So. All right, so uh, some things that are coming up that I think are really exciting are uh, Docker Hub. So this is a public repository of Docker files and images that uh, it's basically community run. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing a bunch of Sitecore containers, Sitecore images on there. I think that'll be pretty exciting. Uh, the next thing is, of course, Windows containers. As we saw, that's, that's coming out pretty soon, I, I'm, I'm told mid uh, 2016. Uh, Rackspace Digital, we saw some pretty cool managed solutions there. Uh, and uh, definitely really exciting to see that there's actual solutions that are built around Sitecore. I think that's really awesome. Uh, I kind of see it as like the holy grail. Like you have an entire environment that you can rebuild or refresh, kind of perform Sitecore things that uh, is, is, you know, fully managed and built around Sitecore from the ground up. And then 
Hedgehog Development. So we're one of the leading Sitecore partners that uh, first tries to understand your needs and then provides a set of uh, tools and services to help you, uh, help you towards a successful implementation of Sitecore. So we have some, some pretty cool stuff. There's a, a, a link at the bottom there. I encourage you to check out to a new tool that we just released that uh, helps you deploy your Sitecore packages automatically. I think it could integrate really nicely with containers and managed solutions and, and helping you with your deployment process. So I encourage you to check that out. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's all my time. Thank you guys very much. All right. Yeah, uh, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, we'll, we'll definitely open it up to the floor, and uh, we can, you can always come by the Hedgehog booth or Rackspace booth. Benjamin? Yeah, there, there's, two, there's two versions of it for Windows. There's the Hyper-V version, uh, and then there's just the standard version, which you have basically two options for creating the images. You can use Docker, or you can use PowerShell. At the moment, those two aren't compatible with each other, uh, but I'm told that's not going to be the, the final uh, way it's going to be when it's released. So uh, you have some options there for, for Windows, yeah. Any other questions? Yes, in fact, that, that demo was on Azure. Uh, so, well, the part that worked. <laughs> so we have, uh, uh, you're able to boot up a new uh, Windows Server uh, 2016 VM, which is what I was running there. Um, and I'm, I, I believe you can run containers in, in cloud services as well, so. Yeah, the Windows containers are, are pretty new. The, the Linux, Linux containers have been around for a long time, uh, and uh, it will be pretty exciting when we can run ASP.NET 5 apps on, on Linux. So uh, I think this will be a, a really exciting stuff to come. So, All right, thanks again, you guys. Appreciate it.